Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The United States Air Force is known for its massive military power, and few things project that power better than its fleet of strategic bombers. One of the oldest and most well-known must be the B-52 Stratofortress. It is so large that the U.S. Air Force has a genius technique to slow down this giant plane during landing. Although the B-52 entered service in 1955, its contract was already extended by 1946. The initial B-52 had straight wings with six turboprop engines and has seen many upgrades in its lifetime. Of those, the B-52D has seen the most models built at 170. After Echo, Foxtrot, and Gulf upgrades, the U.S. Air Force now operates the B-52H Hotel with eight turbofan engines and swept wings. It's those swept wings that provide the B-52 with increased speed making it necessary to have a way to stop its 200,000-pound airframe when landing. Brakes alone would not work because of their momentum. The solution to the problem was easy. It was decided to provide the buff, big ugly fat fellow, with a drag parachute. Drag chute. The idea is that when the B-52 lands, the crew will decide whether to employ the drag chute. That decision depends on the wind speed, the aircraft weight, the length of the runway, and other factors. To stop such a large aircraft, a large drag chute was needed. The diameter of the final design is set at 42 feet. Once deployed, it bleeds the aircraft speed rapidly, making safe landings easier. The Stratofortress also has another feature that allows it to land safely. Its landing gear can turn to ensure that the landing gear wheels land straight down the runway, even if the B-52 is flying at a sideways drift due to crosswinds. It may not be common knowledge, but the F-35A Lightning II, a fifth-generation stealth multi-role fighter, also can use a drag chute. This ability, however, is unique to the F-35As of Norway. The reason for this is that Norway foresees a future battle space where F-35s may have to land on short, damaged runways, or even highways. During the Cold War, the F-4 Phantom II was a very powerful jet. It used drag parachutes to help it land, especially on short or slippery runways. The drag parachute, also called a drogue chute, was opened as soon as the plane touched down to reduce its landing roll greatly. Deploying the parachute was linked to a strong cable. This created a lot of aerodynamic drag that slowed the plane down quickly and safely, so the runway didn't have to be extended. The drag chute on the F-4 showed how well it was planned. It was a fast interceptor that had to respond to different operational theaters. 
This method not only made the plane safer, but it also kept the brakes and landing gear from wearing out sooner. For the drag chute to deploy correctly, it must be packed in the correct manner. To make sure it works properly, the drag parachute is carefully packed. Prior to packing, the parachute must be laid flat and folded in a way that avoids tangles and wrinkles. After carefully looking over each fold, the canopy is rolled up closely. Individually checking and aligning the parachute lines keeps them from getting tangled up. The chute is then placed into its compartment, designed to keep it compact, safe, and ready to go easily. Methodical packing makes sure that the drag chute opens properly when it's needed which increases safety and effectiveness during landing operations in a variety of settings. Parachutes are also part of the ejection seat systems of aircraft. Just like with drag parachutes, the ejection parachutes must be regularly checked by a specialist to ensure that the system is ready for sudden deployment. The Advanced Concept Ejection Seat, ACES-2, and Drogue parachutes of aircraft, like the Big Ugly Fat Fellow, are regularly checked at Air Force bases where they operate. The checking process is systematic and leaves nothing to chance. The slightest tear or frayed paracord indicates that the parachute needs to be repaired or replaced. A drag parachute system was also used by the Space Shuttle program to make sure that landings were safe. The drag chute was stored in a box at the base of the vertical stabilizer. It was opened after landing, but before the nose wheel touched the runway. When it was time to deploy, a mortar shot the pilot chute first, which in turn dragged the main chute out. At first, the main chute opened to 40% to lessen the shock and then it opened all the way as the shuttle speed bled away. This process slowed things down a lot, which kept the brakes and tires from wearing out and made the landings much safer. When the shuttle slowed down to about 60 knots, the chute was ejected to protect the main engines. There are other ways to use parachutes, such as precision airdrops of cargo. Since it was possible to drop munitions with pinpoint accuracy, the US military took it a step further and decided to try the same GPS technology with airdrops. The Joint Precision Airdrop System is a precision airdrop system that the U.S. military made to get supplies and cargo to troops in hard-to-reach or remote places. The system is especially handy in a contested area to prevent the cargo from falling into enemy hands. JPADS uses GPS and INS, inertial navigation system. The device comprises a parachute, a guidance unit, and a payload container. The ability of the JPADS is to have a offset to protect the aircraft and personnel inside the aircraft to deliver loads at an offset away and get it to teams that need to be resupplied. 
Putting the Joint Precision Airdrop System, J-PADS, on a CH-53E heavy lift chopper takes a lot of careful steps. First, the cargo on pallets is set up with the J-PADS guidance unit and parachutes. A forklift is used by ground troops to move the palletized load to the back ramp of the helicopter. The ramp is then lowered and the cargo is carefully slid into the cargo bay while making sure that the weight is spread out equally. Specialized nets and tie-down bands keep the load in place so it doesn't move during flight. The GPS-guided J-PADS unit is linked to the plane's release mechanism, ensuring the launch goes smoothly. After being loaded, every system is checked twice to ensure the air delivery operation is safe and accurate. Once the system is set up, the aircrew can receive communication from ground forces that the original drop zones, DZs, have been overrun, and they can change the DZ on the system. JPADS ensures that the payload is not accidentally dropped into enemy hands, especially sensitive equipment. The JPADS system allows the U.S. Air Force or U.S. Marine Corps to deliver critical cargo at a standoff range to protect the aircraft. Using its INS and GPS, the JPADS system ensures that the intended supplies drop onto the exact DZ required by U.S. ground forces. The JPADS system is designed to basically get into smaller areas. This particular model has terrain avoidance. Uh, it's a mapping system, 10-digit grid coordinate. Um, say the Air Force is in flight and they get communication from the ground force that there's uh, hostiles in the area. The Air Force can change the coordinates to give it to a different DZ that's more secure. There is yet another way in which parachutes are used to deliver systems to the ground. With the GBU-43B Massive Ordnance Air Blast, MOAB, a parachute is used to extract the bomb from the C-130 and slow it down so that the aircraft can get clear before it explodes. There is an even more impressive way in which the U.S. military is using pallets with parachutes to launch JASMs, Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missiles, from cargo aircraft like the C-130 or C-17. These palletized AGM-158 JASMs are loaded like normal palletized cargo, and the system is called Rapid Dragon. Once the aircraft reaches the DZ, the pilot gives the order, and the pallets are expelled from the cargo bay. They begin their descent, which acts as a stabilization phase. From that phase, the engines of the JASMs ignite and they are launched free from the pallet and head for their targets. Small parachutes are used when dropping retarded bombs. These large drops of retarded bomblets are dropped by bombers like the B-1B. When the parachutes are deployed, they slow down their fall which lets them spread out in a controlled way. This method makes the best use of impacted coverage over big areas, hitting enemy troops, vehicles, or equipment with high area coverage and high damage. Parachutes are not just for dropping paratroopers. As we have seen today, they are used to slow down landing aircraft and drop massive bombs, not to mention the precision they provide in terms of cargo drops.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.